Hello everyone and welcome to Live Law. Today I bring to your attention a matter of great significance that is Kunal Kamra's case which is going on in the Bombay High Court. It is not just a matter for Kunal Kamra alone but an issue that affects all individuals who make use of social media platforms. Therefore we believe it is important to provide you with comprehensive information on this matter. Well, the buzz began with the introduction of certain amendments to the IT, that is Information Technology, Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code Rules of 2021, which are commonly referred to as the IT Rules of 2021. Now, you may be wondering, what's the big deal about these rules? Well, let me tell you that they have sparked a heated discussion about the limits of free speech and expression on social media platforms. The key issue at stake here is the intermediary guidelines that have been introduced as part of these rules. But before I get any further into it, intermediaries are essentially social media platforms or any other online platforms where users can freely share their ideas, post videos and photos and communicate with one another. It has become a virtual medium of speech and expression with millions of users taking to these platforms to voice their opinions and views. However, the crux of this matter is that these guidelines have raised concerns about the restrictions that may be imposed on the content posted by users on these platforms. This has led to a debate about the extent to which the fundamental right to free speech and expression guaranteed under Article 19.1a of the Constitution applies to social media platforms. As per Kamra's case, these new rules has created certain roadblocks on this free use of social media as we do now. These rules require intermediaries like social media platforms to make reasonable efforts that no information or misleading information is uploaded by the users. While this might sound like a good idea, there's more to it. These platforms are also required to prevent users from publishing any information about the central government's business that has been labeled as fake or misleading by the government's fact-checking unit, which we call as the FCU. Well, let me put this more simply. As I mentioned that intermediaries are expected to make reasonable efforts that any information which is being uploaded should not be misinformation or misleading. Now the question comes that if you are uploading something, how does this intermediary can find out that the particular information was misinformation or misleading information? Does this mean that every information will have to be verified? Normally, it is our responsibility to make sure that we do not share any fake or misleading information. So basically, we have to do our homework and fact check everything before we hit that post button. And now under these rules, the government has set up the FCU, that is the fact checking unit, that can label information as fake or misleading. And once they do that, you cannot upload it. And essentially, this is what Kunal Kamra's entire case is about. According to him, these rules give the government too much control over us, the intermediaries and the information that we share. Kamara's main issue is with Rule 3, 1, 2C of the IT Amendment Rules 2023, which enables government to do that. Kamara argues that the idea of establishing truth in a system where government has a monopoly over information and truth determination is a blatant threat to the fundamental rights of freedom of speech and expression. He contends that this rule, if upheld, would freeze the citizens' right to speak their mind freely. At a brief hearing on Monday, that is on 24th of April, the Bombay High Court observed prima facie that the amendment lagged safeguards and adjourned the matter until Thursday. According to Kamra, the rule violates Article 14 and 19 of the Constitution and is manifestly arbitrary since the government would act as both prosecutor and judge in its own case. Well, in a nutshell, Kamra's plea strikes at the heart of citizens' right to speak and share their opinions without the fear of unjust reprisal. It is a battle against oppression of voices and a plea to uphold the democratic principles enshrined in the Indian constitution. Coming over to the aspect of Article 14, the Kamra's note, that is the submissions that he made, argues that the rule unfairly separates fake news about the central government from all other fake news. This is unjustified because the government is no more vulnerable than anyone else. Talking about the grievance redressal mechanism, he also criticized the Indian government's grievance redressal mechanism, which involves a fact-checking unit, that is the FCU, 
designated by the government to determine what content is fake, false and misleading. Kamra argues that this system is flawed as the FCU is essentially acting as a judge in its own case without providing users a right to a hearing or a reasoned order before the content is deemed fake. According to him, the grievance redressal mechanism puts users in a helpless position as their content can be taken down without any explanation, leaving them to justify their speech without knowing why the government restricted it in the first place. Talking more of it, the system also does not allow for the social media intermediaries grievance redressal officer or the appellate authority to override or correct FCU's decision. Kamra believes that this is a violation of natural justice and undermines the fundamental right to free speech. And with this, we have come to the end of this video. This was Apurva Pandita and Live Law will keep on bringing more stories that inform, inspire and connect all of us. Until next time, stay informed, stay curious and keep watching Live Law.